on TV, if you're awake late at night, when you should be praying Qiyam al-Layl, they have TV shows that are like the highest rated, like Jay Leno, right? Jay Leno's on at that time. Who else is on at that time? What's that? Uh, David Letterman, yeah, he's been going on for a couple of years. Distraction Club, right? And uh, Jay Leno and so on and so forth. And then they're like, tonight we have a special guest, you know, so-and-so from, is coming directly from Hellfire. We get to interview him. How, how many people would like to watch that interview? That would be an amazing interview. Right? It's way more interesting than the latest movie celebrity telling us about how, you know, the upcoming movie and how, you know, it was really difficult filming the movie and stuff like that. Who cares? You actually waste your, you, you exhaust your life finding out about things like that? Even at the end of it, yeah, why do you always forget the, everything that's going on in TV so quickly? Because it means nothing. It mean, it's like, it's nothingness. Right? It's like, they say empty calories, it's just nothingness. It's just distraction. That's it. It's just a distraction. But now we're going to listen to a really amazing interview. Because we have tonight, someone from Hellfire is coming, and he's going to tell us, how'd you get there? Because we definitely don't want it. Now, the interesting thing about a person from Hellfire is from his smell, everybody on earth would die from his smell. Seeing him, everybody would die. Everything related to him, you would die. But let's just imagine that we're protected and we're able to listen to him. So the question is asked, so what did you do to get into hellfire? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Muddathir where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عَنِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرِ because we do have this interview, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recorded it for us in the Qur'an. That they will question the criminals, what got you into hellfire? What made you arrive into hellfire? So this is the response. قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ وَكُنَّا نُكَذِّبُ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينِ حَتَّى أَتَانَ الْيَقِينِ They say, number one, number one reason, they're like, and you imagine they're like, I want everybody to know this, they're saying that the number one reason that they're in hellfire is they never used to do their salah. لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We weren't amongst those who used to pray. We didn't do our salah. Now, subhanAllah, when someone wants to become Muslim, uh, someone who's really amazing giving da'wah is Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Hafidahullah. Amazing. And I, and I watched him one day, this you know, brother came, you know, he's just walking around, and Sheikh Yusuf basically, this is like sum, summed it up for him. Do you have a problem believing in Allah? No, no problem. Who, uh, everybody's like, it's ingrained. Do you believe Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? The person's like, yeah, I believe that. Do you have a problem praying to God? No, I have no problem. Okay, great, you're Muslim. <laughs> Repeat after me. Ashhadu, Ashhadu, and the Shahada. And the guy's like, oh, I guess I'm becoming Muslim now. Right? Because it's a simplification. Because when it comes down to it, your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you pray to Him. Now, a Muslim, sometimes they get confused. They're like, they don't pray, and they're like, Allah is going to forgive us one day. Now, that's really dangerous. Because actually the next verses that I'm going to talk about are verses that speak about the munafiqeen. And that's one of the key beliefs of the hypocrites. Is that they plant seeds of hellfire thinking that one day God's going to forgive us. But their whole life they planted seeds of hellfire. And so when the seeds come out, did anybody tell you that you have to pray? No, they did. Alam yatikum nadir. Didn't somebody warn you? Yeah, they told us. So, number one thing is, قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمُنْ مُصَلِّينَ If you're not praying your five prayers, your fard, that's, and you'll hear me repeat it again and again, Islam is not difficult. You just go to the five pillars of Islam, and that's Islam, that will bring you to Jannah. And that is belief in Allah, belief in the Messenger of Allah, your salah, to pray your five prayers, your fard, right? فَجَدُهَا عَصْرُ مَغْرِبْ عِشَاءَ 
to give your zakat, right? The 2.5% on the money you're earning at the end of the year. It's a lot cheaper than the taxes you're paying. So like 55%, right? 2.5% to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the masakeen. Um, your zakat, your siyam, your fasting in Ramadan. And many people, alhamdulillah, normally even if they're not practicing Islam, they're still fasting in Ramadan. Siyam and hajj, to do hajj sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the basis of your life. And you'll be saved. And it's very easy. So the number one reason that they got to hellfire, قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ But number two is interesting as well. وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ And we never used to feed the needy people. So if this is a characteristic of the highest characteristics of the people that went to hellfire, ask yourself, when was the last time you fed a needy person? I can even say, when was the last time you donated anything? And I'm saying that that's just our culture. We don't donate. Yeah, the masjid sometimes, someone will say, brothers, sisters, please donate to the masjid, right? We donate to the building. When was the last time you donated anything? Right? If you, if you put a coin in the box, you would hear it clang at the bottom. Correct? Do you agree? So you, someone try it out after. There's nothing in the box. Correct? Do you agree with me? Now, if the people of Hellfire said, we were never amongst those who used to feed the needy people. It wasn't our characteristic. This is what a characteristic of the people of Hellfire. And so what you need to do, and now the Masakeen, the needy people, are we talking about Muslim needy people? Of course they're included, but needy people is anybody needy. Is anybody needy? When you ever see, when you see people downtown asking for money, immediately everybody thinks they're going to use it on drugs. Right? They're going to use it to buy drugs. Allah, I'm not going to give them. Okay, you didn't give them. Who did you give then? I'm going to give it to the Muslims. Okay, great. When did you give it to the Muslims? Never. It's just you didn't give that guy and you didn't give anybody. And so you don't know this guy, even though maybe he does have drugs or something like that, do you think he needs to eat? <laughs> and if he buys with drugs, he just buys drugs with his money, he's not going to eat. So eating, if you didn't know, was one of his needs. So now this person, subhanAllah, I was once, and I'm not saying like I run around downtown all the time giving people, it's a reminder for myself, a reminder for you. I was once downtown one place, I said, you know what, I'm going to give these needy people. They were actually sleeping outside, this was in Boston once. They were sleeping outside, I've seen people sleep on the street like that in Hajj time. But they, these people have a home just in Hajj, they're just sleeping on the street. I've seen that before. In downtown Boston, um, you'll see people sleeping in the street, they have no home. They're on the street. And so I said, you know what, I'm not going to give them money, I'm going to go in, I'm going to buy some food for them. And I went in, and there was people asking for money outside the door. But I said, you know what, I'm going to buy them food and just give them the food. So I bought all these um, you know, sandwiches and so on and so forth. And then I came outside and I saw them counting their money. The guys were sitting there, here's 10 cents, here's 25 cents, here's the money that you donated. And, and I gave them the sandwich. And they're like, thanks man, we were just putting our money together to see if we could buy one. And then I went to the people, some of them slept and I'm sure that they slept without eating. And I put the sandwiches, you know, by their beds. You know, somewhere that no one would steal it from there, but somewhere if they woke up, they would find the sandwich there. It is the characteristic of the people of Hellfire that they do not feed the needy people. And so again, understanding that, you now know what the characteristic of the people of Jannah are. They feed the needy people. And the last, um, the last verses that we'll be going through tonight, inshallah ta'ala, because when we're speaking about we're speaking about Jannah and, and we're speaking about Hellfire, you might mistakenly think that there are only two groups, but there are actually three groups. Where did the third group go? Hellfire too. <laughs> They're in Hellfire too. So it's Jannah has one group of people; those are the believers, and Hellfire has two groups of people; those are the kuffar and the munafiqin. 
the munafiqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ That the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, those who outwardly said that they were Muslims or believers, but inwardly they weren't believers. And now this is where the really scary thing comes up. And subhanAllah, the reason that they got into hellfire, into hellfire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the Quran. يَوْمَ تَرَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَسْعَى نُورُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ بُشْرَاكُمُ الْيَوْمِ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the believers, believing men and women, Yawma tara al mu'minin On the day when you'll see the believing men and women Nuruhum yas'a They have light It's like yas'a It's like bayna aydihim wa bi'aymanihim It's like it's coming from everywhere The believers are full of light And it actually is interesting The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam There's a hadith in which he said Bashir al mashaeena fi al-dhulami ila al-masajid Bin nur al-tami yawm al-qiyamah He says give glad tidings like good news For those who walk in the darknesses To the masjids that they will have complete light on the day of resurrection. And so giving good news is not on the day of judgment you give good news. Of course that's the good news, but it's give good news to the people in the dunya. So it's like every time you come for Isha, every time you come for Fajr, if you look outside right now, it's really dark outside. So good news for all of you, inshallah ta'ala. You came here in the darkness of the night to pray in the masjid, to be reminded of Allah. So I give you good news, inshallah ta'ala, that you'll have complete light on the day of resurrection. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the believing men and women. And again, this applies to men and women. The nur is coming from all directions and so on. This may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and protect me. Wa jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.